Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know, when we were kids, back before electricity, <laughs> we were told by a cartoon called The Jetsons oh. that we were going to have flying cars by the year 2020. I remember that. I remember that prediction. You remember what they sounded like? Mm, that's right. Yeah, mm, that's them. That one just flew by right uh -huh. there. Uh, it hadn't happened. It hadn't happened. No. And I got to say, I'm frankly a little pissed, a little bitter. My third grade teacher, Miss Selby, mm -hmm. she said the same thing. She said we'd have flying cars. Well, by the year 2000, though. Oh, wow. So she missed it by a long shot. The year 2020 is not that far away. Right around the corner. There's something about those four numbers together that just sounds futuristic, like a date that George Jetson or Flash Gordon would have signed on their checks. <laughs> if you asked us 10 or even 20 years ago what we expected in the year 2020, we probably would have guessed that we'd all be eating synthetic food pills and being served by robot butlers. Man, I need to get me one of them. Or a monkey. <laughs> but ask us the same question now, and our best prediction is that 2020 will be mostly the same as today. Yeah but with slightly more expensive smartphones. <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed. $3,000 phones. Yeah. All right. So for the last 100 years, thinking about 2020 has brought out the active imaginations in so many. Let's now take a look at some hilarious predictions made long ago about the year 2020. What people living back in the 50s and 60s predicted what would happen by the year 2020. Ronnie, you want to take the first one? I got to say this first one probably came right after the uh, the movie Planet of the Apes came oh, out. Oh, with Charlton Heston. That because was a great movie. It says, number one, we will have ape chauffeurs. What? Yes. I got to give me one of them. Yeah, which... Another you, monkey. You got you got one in mind? Uh, Magilla. Mag I'm, oh, I'm going to go all Magilla Gorilla. Magilla Gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go, uh, I'd like the Grape Ape. Grape Ape. Yeah. Okay. That'd be a big one. All right, good. Well, then we, we can be co-heroes. Co <laughs> uh, the second issue of Futurist Magazine, published in 1967, contained an exclusive report from Rand Corporation, a global think tank with a track record that's included contributing to the space program and the development of the internet. This time, however, maybe a little bit of a swing and a miss. <laughs> In a story titled, Intelligent Apes Become Chauffeurs, they shared details from a RAND study indicating by the year 2020 may be possible to breed intelligent species of animals such as apes that will be capable of performing manual labor, such as driving us around. You know, we haven't even completely taught our millennials to drive yet, so I think this one is mostly... Grape Uber? Yeah. Grape Ape? No. Yeah. All right. Uh, along next with our hilarious predictions about the year 2020 made long ago, all roads will become tubes. If you're sick of asphalt roads, and I know I am, with all their potholes and endless rush hour gridlock, then you should be delighted to learn that by the year 2020, every road and street in America will be replaced by a network of pneumatic tubes. You know, like those things they have at the bank? Oh, yeah. At the drive through they yeah, suck those. those suckers up Holy, there. They, they haul ass. Oh, yeah, and I love when they put change in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> according to a 1957 article in Popular Mechanics, it explained how the family vehicle of 2020 would only need enough power to get you from your home to the nearest tube. Then, by the calculations of a Honeywell engineer, what a monkey that guy is. <laughs> and, and you know what? I'm, I apologize to all monkeys. They will be <laughs> pneumatically powered to any desired destination. Hmm. I wonder how long it would take to get from California to New York in one of them pneumatic tubes. <sighs> not very long. 20 seconds? Yeah. Not how fast do you long. think you'd be going? Holy cow. Right? Yeah, fast. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. This next one. Thomas Edison made this prediction. Uh, and he played a role in some of the greatest inventions of modern man. Light bulbs, movie cameras, what have you. That doesn't mean he only had good ideas. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, in a 1911 interview, he predicted that the house of the next century will be furnished from basement to attic with steel. And, wouldn't end there, 
The baby of the 21st century will be rocked in a steel cradle. His father will sit in a steel chair at a steel dining table. And mother's boudoir will be sumptuously equipped with steel furnishings. Wow. Kind of sounds a little bit uncomfortable to me. A little bit, yeah. Mm, yeah. I'm thinking steel lingerie. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, in our or on our list of hilarious predictions about the year 2020 made long ago, we will finally make it to Mars. We've been dreaming of making it to Mars for as long as we've known the red planet existed. But it's only recently that the venture has started to feel even more remotely realistic. Back in 1997, Wired Magazine, which is really pretty cool mag, picked the date 2020 as the year when humans arrive on Mars. Because we just did put a rover there that's been taking some amazing pictures. You know what I can't help but notice? How clear those pictures are on Mars versus the... <laughs> the average bank? Bank heist, yeah. <laughs> bank videos. I don't, I don't are, know. Are awful. <laughs> In the go-go 90s, we had every reason to believe them but we're not so optimistic that Mars tourism is in our immediate future. <laughs> even NASA projects, uh, I'm sorry, even NASA projects, <laughs> you can see that's an honest mistake. Yeah, that, yes. That the earliest we could go get a human on the face of Mars uh, is 2030. And that's only if we're really, really lucky. So I don't know if I see that happening at all. Uh, I mean, I saw the movie The Martian. I thought we already had people on on Mars. Right. I guess, Money. Uh, that's another one of those stories you're not supposed to share crazy. with me. Yeah. All right. It's next one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I hope this doesn't come true. It says that women will all be built like wrestlers. Oh, God, no. Yeah. And no, well, no, it, no. Now, if they're talking about the... What, what do they call that? Raw? The Glow? Glow. The gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I met those girls, and that one uh, Samoan girl put me in a headlock. Yet. I want to tell you, she. I thought I was going to be squeezed like a zit. <laughs> now, some of those ladies are unbelievably fit and attractive. However, leave it to me. Some of them are. They have shoulders broader than mine, yeah. and uh, I don't need that. Biceps bigger than my thighs. Yeah. Uh, so in 1950, mm -hmm. an Associated Press writer, Dorothy Rowe, revealed some shocking predictions of what life on Earth would be in the 21st century. That was 70 years ago. Yes. Dang, it was. Holy cow. Almost, 68. Mm -hmm. uh, among her more head-scratching forecasts were that the women of tomorrow would be more than six feet tall, which that is happening, uh, and they would wear a size 11 shoe have shoulders like a wrestler and muscles like a truck driver. Boy, that's so attractive. Wow. Her proportions would be perfectly Amazonian due to science providing a balanced ration of vitamins, proteins, and minerals that produce that will produce maximum bodily efficiency. Not for me, thanks. And you know, now if they look like the Amazon uh, queen, oh God, what's it, from uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, Gall. You're looking oh, at me. Dang. I don't. You're the movie guy. Yeah, I saw the movie. I can't think of her name. She's. I'll just drink coffee while you're. Yeah, she's stunning. So yeah, it'd be okay if, if they look like an Amazon like that. All right, this is our list of, our year end, hilarious predictions, about the year 2020 made long ago. Computers probably won't catch on. No. Nah. Our friend Dave, he nailed it. Yeah, oh, he was right on spot. Yeah. Computers, internet, cell Social phones, media. That stuff. That's he doesn't need it. Flash in the pan. Yeah, it's never going to... Never going to catch on. Worse than predictions of technology that don't pan out as promised are predictions that painfully underestimate technology's potential. Take Thomas Watson, the one-time president of IBM, who suggested back in 1943 that future consumer demand for his company's products was limited at best. I think there is a world market for maybe five computers, he said. Well, he was close. Yeah. Uh, as of 2014, there were an estimated two billion personal computers in use across the globe. So that means Watson was only off by 
one million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. <laughs> Just barely missed it. Uh, he wasn't the only computer expert who thought there was no future in the industry. Ken Olson, founder of Digital Equipment Corporation, famously or perhaps infamously, predicted back in 77, there is no reason anyone, anyone would want a computer in their home. Imagine that. Imagine how surprised he'd be to learn that we don't only want them in our homes, we all carry around tiny computers yep. in our pockets. Yep. Who would have thought, Ronnie, you know what? When so, I used to call you, I'm sorry, when I used to call you, say, hey, let's get a band practice on Friday, pick up the phone, dial the number with a rotary, yep. you pick it up, because we didn't have answer machines no, back then. Yeah, and no caller ID. Right. And so you Because I would who never was. answer. Exactly. <laughs> um, and, and now, uh, I can call you and we can view each other. Yep. We got televisions on our phones. Yep. Who would have ever thought back in, say, 75, 77, that that would really become a reality? So I remember as a senior in high school, I was in a an advanced math class where we programmed computers. Mm -hmm. 1975. Coding. And what you did, you used a punch card. Right. And you would punch out little things. They were all zeros and ones, right. what the computer read. Binary system. Yes. And you slide that into the card reader, and it would perform a calculation. Uh, you know, like figuring out uh, pi to the... I love pi. To the 500th number. Oh, that kind of pi. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was amazing, but unbelievably time-consuming. Yeah. So, and once you made one of those cards, you never wanted to, okay, well, I'm done with this one. I'm throw it away. You would write on it, oh, this one is calculating pi, or this one is calculating the, you know, the, uh, the how much a cylinder holds. Um, so, yeah, very, very difficult. I can see why people might have thought that they wouldn't catch on. Yeah, flash in the pan. Yep. Okay, next one. We'll live in flying houses. Say what? Mm. Yeah, Arthur C. Clarke, an inventor, science writer, and futurist, believed the boring houses of 1966 would be radically different by the time we reached the year 2020. The house of the future, he said, would have no roots tying it to the ground. Gone would be water pipes, drains, power lines. Uh, autonomous home could therefore move or be moved to anywhere on Earth at the owner's whim. Uh, and it wasn't just one home that could relocate without the owner even needing to get out of bed and put on pants. Whole communities might migrate south in the winter. I like that. Or move to new lands whenever they feel they need a change of scenery. Uh, and if you really want to know what your home will look like in the future... Uh, <laughs> well, oh, you, we could only guess at this point, yeah. really. Well, and you know, this is kind of... Although they don't fly, motorhomes kind of give you that same uh, <laughs> same technology. Freedom, anyway. Yeah. All right. Our list of hilarious predictions about the year 2020 made long ago. I see why we went in this rotation on this particular one. You wanted me to get this one. Yes. <laughs> Everybody is going to be drunk all the time. <sighs> That's you. That sounds like utopia. Right. <laughs> if you somehow got the crazy idea that people in the year 2020 would be limiting their alcohol intake and drinking more green tea instead, you are sadly mistaken. Not so much. At least if you believe Serbian engineer and inventor Nikola Tesla, who predicted in 1937 that within a century, coffee, tea, and tobacco will no longer be in vogue. Alcohol, however, will still be used, he claimed. It is not a stimulant, but a veritable elixir of life. Hmm. Let's hope he's right about tobacco, but we're not so sure coffee and tea should be cut out in favor of more booze. Mm -hmm. I, I might give you a run on that one. Uh, then again, <laughs> this is the same guy who warned against chewing gum, which Tesla thought could cause exhaustion of the slivery glands, putting many foolish victims into an early grave. <laughs> wow. Okay. See, uh, you know, you got to take the good. The, you got to take the bad. Yeah. You take the good. You take There's the two bad. two sides to every coin. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Okay. Now this one, this could happen. I don't know if it'll happen by the year 2020, but I, I have a feeling that this is, we're looking at this, there will be basically blood banks for teeth. That sounds gross. Yeah. So right now we have Look blood at this banks. picture we're showing right uh, here. Yeah. Oh, that's a great picture. Uh, her tooth looks like a chiclet. Ouch. <laughs> uh, so right now we have blood banks where life-saving plasma can be donated and used to help patients, patients who need emergency blood. So why, you might be wondering, are there no tooth banks? Yeah. What's that tooth fairy? Yeah. Come on. Uh, well, if you weren't wondering that, well, then you probably weren't a subscriber to Modern Mechanics magazine in the 40s. Oh, I didn't renew it. Or you would have read a fabulous article in 1947 promising that in the future, tooth banks would just be real, not, not only be realistic, but a good idea. Picture the possibilities, the story read. Into the junk pile will go all the artificial dentures, all the bridges, plates, partial plates, all men and women of whatever age will be able to have human teeth embedded inside their gums until the day they die. Now, the reason I think that this could happen is because of the growing number of methamphetamine crackhead abusers mm -hmm. whose teeth fall out at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. And so somebody... Yeah, there there could be definitely a, a use for this in the in the near future. Well, God knows we don't want our homeless to have bad teeth. Correct. Right. Yeah. I can see you that you're you're just being a giver again. When they bite doing. you on the leg with their gums, right? That's mm -hmm. not awful enough. No. Yeah, you have to have some teeth in there. All right, a couple more here. Mail will be sent via rocket. <laughs> I gotta get me one in. <laughs> so they shoot is off this, a rocket. Is this only in North Korea? Or? Uh, let's see. No. No. Okay. Uh, mail delivered by a cruise missile, as insane as it sounds, was successfully attempted back in 1959 <laughs> when a Navy submarine, the USS Barbero, sent 3,000 letters all addressed to political figures like President Dwight D. Eisenhower using only a rocket. The nuclear warhead was taken out and replaced with mail containers, and the missile was launched toward the Naval Auxiliary Air Station. The mail was successfully delivered, and Postmaster General Arthur E. Summerfield <clears throat> was so excited by this historic significance of mail delivery via instruments of war that he predicted it would become commonplace by the next century. Man, uh, I'm sorry, mail will be delivered within hours from New York to California to Britain to India or Australia by guided missiles. We stand on the threshold of rocket mail. Boy, that's a shame that didn't happen. What happens when the rocket gets to your house and it lands? Crash landing, I have to assume. Uh, probably. You know, be probably. Like, be like lawn darts in your lawn. Yeah, right out there by the um, windmill that you got out there out front. Yes. A little crashed rocket. <laughs> Come out, you get your mail. And what do you do with the rocket? I guess you light it and send it back. I don't know. California recycling, maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe they'll put a can out for that. Mm, probably yeah, not. Probably not. All right, that'll do it for our list of 20 hilarious predictions about the year 2020 made long ago. I'm still kind of bummed about the flying car situation. I'm, I, boy, if Mrs. Selby, if I ever find her, I I'm gotta. telling you... Right to the moon, Mrs. Selby. <laughs> You're still bitter, Ron. I am bitter. You are bitter. I was looking forward to that. Okay. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, I hope you did, and these are some fun predictions, uh, feel free to comment below. Uh, you can send us suggestions, comments, whatever concerns. I would like to hear what their predictions are for the year 2020. Uh-huh. Because that's not that far off. It's so. not. It's like a year away. Right. Yeah. So give us a prediction or two. And be sure and subscribe to our channel when you do. Uh, click the bell so that you might get notifications each time a new show comes out. Uh, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And this has been another episode of Men Are So Smart.